Hey, what's up guys, Joker here. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at the EVGA Torque X5 gaming mouse, which comes in at just under $50. And I'm gonna be comparing it to my Myonix caster because that's been my daily driver for about the past nine months ever since that mouse came out, which uses the Pixart 3310 sensor. This EVGA mouse is using the 3988 sensor, which is a step up in terms of tracking from the 3310, but it's not as good as the 3366 that you would find in some of the Logitech mice like the G502. But the tracking on this, I'd have to say, immediately after starting using this, I noticed it was better than the Myonix caster, and that is why this has actually replaced it as being my daily driver mouse. I am not kidding. When I first got this mouse, my immediate reaction was it has a glossy, reflective finish I know like. So uh, but I, and I wasn't, I was like, oh, I don't even know if I want to give this mouse a chance. But after just a couple of days of using it because of the shape of the mouse, as well as the accuracy of the sensor, this has now become my daily driver. And I do have a couple of complaints about it, which I'm going to get to in a little bit. But first, I want to talk to you guys about some of the things that I do like on this mouse better than my Myonix caster and why I'm using it now every single day for gaming and editing videos and just at the desktop in general. So coming from the Myonix caster, I have to let you guys know that I tend to favor a smaller mouse as I use kind of a hybrid between like a fingertip and a claw grip almost when I start gaming. My left finger will tend to start to curl up as I'm aiming and shooting around in games. It's a very, very odd grip. And as a result of it, I tend to favor smaller mice. Now the Myonix caster is or has already been considered a rather small mouse, uh, smaller than my G502 certainly. It comes in at 122 millimeters in length and 93 grams of weight without the cable that is. Switching over to the EVGA mouse, it is a little bit shorter, coming in at 117 millimeters, so it's five millimeters shorter, and it also is weighing 85 grams, so it's about eight grams lighter than the Myonix caster. So if you have a concern about using a small, light mouse, it might be a concern for you, but honestly, it was not an issue for me. Um, but I tend to favor smaller mouse, like I said, but I'm not a fan of really, really light mice, and I wouldn't call this a light mouse by any means. It doesn't feel like a light, cheap mouse. So if that's if that's a concern, I wouldn't have that. Uh, it feels very solid in its build quality, even though it is a small, it's a smaller mouse, but it feels extremely solid when I pick it up and put it back down on, on the desk if I have to do that when I am gaming in really fast movements. It, it doesn't, I don't hear any like rattling or any loose parts when I do put it down. That's actually something I did have on my G502. If I would pick it up and put it down, I would hear like plastic parts rattling and little springs and stuff moving. It, it had kind of a cheap feeling to it. That's not the case here with the EVG X5. Everything on here feels solid and taut. Like the, the switches as well, there's no play on the left and right switches if I try to, you know, wiggle them back and forth by lightly touching them. I'm not seeing any give there. They require a little bit more force, I would say, to push down versus my Myonix caster, but it was something that I actually uh, preferred having a little bit heavier of a click there because it helped me from not misclicking sometimes in games or even at the desktop. Sometimes that does happen when I'm editing uh, videos. I might misclick in my software and like drag something somewhere it shouldn't be and I'm like, oh shit, what did I do? So I've act I actually favored the, uh, the left and right click on this even though they are using the Omron switches with 20 million click life cycle, which I believe is the same as the caster. I just felt the implementation here was a little bit better. So clicking around on the left and right mouse, I felt even pressure being required for clicking the mouse all the way at the front and about halfway down behind the scroll wheel. If you go down further than that, you know, you're, you're not going to really get, get a click. But if you're up around towards the front of the mouse, then you're going to have pretty even clicks, whether you're farther forward or further back, if you happen to favor something like a claw grip. And the smaller stature of this mouse does favor kind of a fingertip or a claw grip if you use something like that. If you're a full palm grip or if you have a little bit larger hands, then you might not be comfortable using a mouse this small. That's just something I want to make you guys aware of. But for me, with my hand size and the grip that I use, it happens to fit me perfectly. It also happens to be ambidextrous, and because of that, it's completely symmetrical. You have buttons on both the left and the right side, and if you're using it lefty or righty, you can go into the included software and disable the other buttons. And as if it bothers, if uh, you think maybe it might bother your hand, I want to tell you guys that I am extremely particular about feelings and, and just little tiny things like that will just annoy the hell out of me if it gets in the way. 
This was not the case here on this mouse. And the reason for it, I would contribute it to the fact that the front button is extremely smooth and flush to the rest of the mouse. So it almost feels like there's nothing there at all. It almost feels just like an additional ledge on the side for your finger to rest on, almost like an ergonomic design. It's really nice and it does not get in the way of my enjoyment of the mouse at all, even though I'm not taking advantage of those buttons and I have them turned off. On the side of the mouse where I was using the thumb buttons, I had no issue reaching for the back button to click back in web pages, although I would say that the front one was a little further forward than I would like. I haven't really found many implementations of a forward mouse button on the side here that I've I've been able to reach comfortably. So I wouldn't really rule this out as a you know a bad design here. It's just something I've really never found on a mouse that has been comfortable for me, with the lone exception being um, on the Logitech MX Master, which actually put the mice buttons on top of each other as opposed to one in front of the other. And that's something I'd like to see more mice do maybe in the future, because that was a really good design on the MX Master. It's just a shame it's not a gaming mouse with high enough DPI for my needs. So beyond the reflective finish of the mouse, which I'm not a big fan of, there is another gripe that I do have to make with this mouse with the design and the implementation of the scroll wheel. For whatever reason, the, the rubber that is used on the scroll wheel does not appear to be uh, completely attached to the scroll wheel and it's not like one whole solid unit like I've seen on pretty much every other mouse before or at least other mice haven't had it separating like this. Whereas I can grab uh, the rubber on the scroll wheel here and kind of separate it from uh, the actual wheel itself, which is not something I want to see really. Um, you know, I'm afraid that something like that could possibly maybe break over time or wear down just because of the fact that it's already loose, you know, coming off of there uh, right away. So um, I, I hope that in a, in a future version of this mouse, maybe they refine the scroll wheel a little bit. Uh, it's just, you know, some honest feedback I'm hoping to give them so that they can correct this mouse because it has become my daily driver because I like the shape of it and the sensor on it is far superior to my myonic caster in my personal opinion and something else i wanted to show you guys here um the i want to give you guys some sound tests here on the evga torque x5 actually so you can get an idea of what this mouse is sounding like The reason I wanted to show you guys that is because my Myonix caster, even though I've only been using it for about nine months, has already begun to wear down on the left mouse, developing an audible squeak that I want to show you guys here now. So that has become extremely annoying for me having to listen to that and it's it's a sign that the mouse is starting to break down in less than a year. Uh, you know, it is, it is being used quite heavily but still in the course of a year I wouldn't have expected it to break down that quickly where I'm starting to hear squeaks in the left mouse. The X5 from EVGA is using a braided cable and you guys know my feeling on braided cables that I've talked about in the past. I'm not a big fan of braided cables in general. I would much prefer having a rubber cable or um, a braided cable that's a little bit looser. The, I would say that the caster has to, wins here as far as braided cables are concerned because it's a little bit more flexible. If I pinch the cable together, I can actually close it to close the gap pretty easily without much effort at all. Whereas on the X5, it's a much stiffer braided cable and I really have to make an effort to actually pinch the cable together. Unfortunately, it also failed my jump rope test. I'm just kidding. That's not a real test. I have to, I feel like I have to actually say that even though it's a joke. Some people might take it seriously. There is a DPI switch right behind the scroll wheel, which you can use to switch between four different levels that you can customize within the included software between 200 and 6400 DPI. There's also an LED on there, which will indicate which one of your custom settings that you are at. I chose to uh, leave it at 4000 DPI on my lowest setting so that I didn't have to see the LEDs lit up because they're red. And if you're using any other color LED, uh, on the mouse, which you can customize in the software. I chose to use purple because Joker. And so because of that, the red LEDs kind of stood out to me. Unless you're using, unless you are using the red, then the red LEDs of the DPI switch do kind of stand out. I'd like to see that maybe uh, match the other color of the mouse or be able to customize those independently of each other. 
Speaking of that EVGA software that lets you customize the mouse, it does offer quite a robust feature set in here for customization. You can turn off or change some of the clicks on the mouse if you want to, like if you wanted to turn off the side buttons that you're not using, since it is an ambidextrous mouse, you could turn that off. You've also got your custom DPI setting up here, so you could change that, as well as your mouse's sensitivity. You could also change between seven different colors in here. They've got red, green, blue, yellow, orange, pink, and purple. And you could change the brightness on that as well or turn the LED completely off. In the advanced settings, you have a little bit more control here for your DPI settings and the polling rate, which goes up to 1000 hertz and down to 125. We've also got some OS controls like angle snapping, mouse acceleration. You can adjust the lift height and use a surface calibration tool based on your mouse pad. And you've also got mouse scroll speed as well as your double click speed. And you can also come in here and set some custom macros if you want and profiles so you could switch between those. One last thing I want to point out about the software is that after I installed this on my PC, it actually, it actually set up four different instances of it for startup for different mice, the mice that I didn't even own, for the Torque X3, X3L, X5, and X5L. So it created a different instance of a startup program for each one of these individually with a medium startup impact. I went and turned those off right away because I would notice when I was starting up my system at the beginning of the day, I couldn't move the mouse around because it was like getting set up with, and it had like four different versions of the software launching. So it made my startups extremely slow. So I recommend going in there and disabling those. Once you have the mouse set up, customized, the way that you want because you really do not need the software running in the background all the time. All of your settings uh, will be bound into the hardware of the mice. So you don't need to have this software running all the time. Uh, so disable that stuff once you get it done and that'll speed things up. And hopefully uh, EVGA puts out an update in the near future where we can, uh, you know, have these extra instances of the software at the very least disabled for the mice that we don't even own. Okay, so given my negative feedback about some of the features of this mouse, like the reflective finish, the scroll wheel, which has the rubber coming off of it, and a stiffer cable than my, my Myonix caster, which I don't even like braided cables to begin with, why would I be using this mouse as my daily driver? It really comes down to the sensor, the 3988, which I think is above and beyond the 3310 as far as its tracking and accuracy is concerned, and I prefer the shape and just the overall size and weight of the EVGA mouse a hell of a lot more than the Myonix caster, so much that I'm willing to uh, look past some of the, the gripes that I have about this mouse that I don't have issues with on the caster because I think that the sensor is infinitely more important than some of the other things on the mouse. Hopefully they do take my feedback to heart though. Maybe we see an updated version of this in the future. That's really why I wanted to give my honest feedback because I do like this mouse genuinely. I genuinely like this mouse a lot. So I'm hoping they take the feedback and apply it to an updated version and give us a better one uh, the next time around that is maybe a little bit friendlier to gamers or well, at least me. Uh, you guys can let me know down in the comments below what you think about my feedback on this mouse. Will you go out and pick one up or would you wanna wait for another version of it? Because I know uh, this reflective, the white finish on it, you know, it might it might really just uh, wet your whistle. For me, it's 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 not doing it. Uh, so that's why I want to see another version of it get released in the future. But if you if it's something you like, then hey, you know, I'm gonna put a link down in the description below if you guys do want to pick this mouse up over on Amazon. Helps to support the channel, and it's under 50 bucks. So pretty damn good price, given the, given the fact that it's got Omron switches. It's got a good sensor in there. It's got a decent amount of customization in the software that you can do, even mouse uh, a surface calibration tool. So I've got no complaints as far as like that other stuff is concerned. It's really just a couple of little design features that I hope they get ironed out for the next version. But I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here now, guys, and I hope you enjoyed the review on the EVGA Torque X5, and I'll catch you next time. Ta-ra. <laughs>